short for macronutrients, okay? Proteins, carbs, and fat. We are going to send you, based on the numbers that we get tonight, we are going to send you your starting macro, okay? Um, so we will send you back an amount of protein, carbs, and fat that you will be eating to start this program, okay? So we're just going to use ballpark numbers just to give you an idea. So because Because I'm really bad at math, I know these numbers are really easy, so we're just going to use these, okay? So your first week is no direct carbs. So what we do here, our first step is teaching you how to read nutrition labels. We do direct macro counting, okay? What that means is if you've ever looked at the back of a jar of peanut butter, natural peanut butter, you'll notice it has protein, carbs, and fat in it, right? If you look on our food list, which you should all be familiar with because you all went to the members page like good people, you have to print it down. Awesome. So um, it is on our members page. If you don't know where that is, if you're on your phone only, you can post. Go into the members page. That first document, six week challenge info sheet. Add the food list in. Okay. Um, what we do here is direct macro count. So wherever it is under the list, that's the only thing you count the food. Okay. So if peanut butter is under the fat list, you only count the fat in the peanut butter. Everything else we don't care about. Okay. If you're eating, let's say, lean ground beef. Okay, there's probably, let's say there's 20 grams of fat and they, or 20 grams of protein and you need 7 grams of fat. We don't count the fat, we only count the protein because it's on the protein list. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if it's on the list under protein, we only count the protein. No? Okay. I, I said that under. Okay, so, so here's the, the easiest way to kind of think of this. And, and this is what I'm going to tell you. It'll be really, really boring for your first week. Stick to the list. As long as you stick to the list, your life is going to be super easy, okay? It's if you start going, well, what about this? 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 That's when you're going to start to have a rough time. For the first week to two weeks, I tell everybody to stick to the list, and it's going to make your life super easy. So if you go, let's make your meal, let's make a day for meal plan this week, okay? Just to make it easy. So if I divide, if I say, so you have to choose between four to six meals a day. You can choose whatever you want. All I ask you to do is be consistent for a week, and then at the end of the week, if you say, that was too many, and that wasn't enough, modify, okay? But don't do four one day, five the next day, four the next day, you know what I'm saying? Be consistent with it, okay? So we're gonna do four meals to start, okay? So if we divide 165 by four, we have 40 grams of protein per meal, okay? And if we do the same thing with fat, we have 20 grams of fat, right? So, first meal of the day, what do you want to eat? Pick a, pick a fruit. Egg. Egg. Okay, so egg is a good example. So, an egg is the only food, if you look on the food list, it's the only food on there that counts as both a protein and a fat because they're equal amounts. But, egg beaters are just protein. And, and that's on the protein list. So we're going to use egg beaters for this. Okay, perfect. We're going to use egg beaters for this. Okay? So, this is what your number one complaint is going to be for the first two weeks. I can't eat all this food. That's going to be the number one complaint you have. 70% of women under eat. And what happens is if you under eat, your body is in starvation mode. It does not want to burn. It does not know when it's going to get fed, how much it's going to get fed, or when it's that meal is coming, or what it's going to consist of. Okay? That's why you have extra fat because you probably under eat, so your body is in storage mode, it's not burn mode. Our number one priority is we teach your body how to burn fat, which is why your carbs are drastically low your first week, so that way your body relearns how to burn fat for food. Does that make sense? Okay, so 40 grams of protein of egg beaters. It's not 40 grams of egg beaters. That's like a tablespoon, okay? If you don't know, if you don't know what the egg beaters are, it's those cartons of eggs, the big ones, just so you know, if you were to eat just egg beaters for your protein, that'd be about half of that carton. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you can combine protein sources. So let's say you put some chicken in it, or whatever you want. You can combine protein sources, or a shake. And I'm going to go over shakes in a minute, okay? So let's pick a fat to go with your egg beaters. Cheese? Good cheese? I love cheese. Now, here's a caveat with cheese. Don't say, oh, good cheese, and do cheese four times a day. That will ruin your life, okay? Please don't do that. Um, 
Try to limit your dairy a little bit. He's a fine, but don't be like, I love Jesus. You're really All right? If I look at your menu and you're like, oh, and I eat eight times of cheese a day. All right? So, egg beaters and cheese. Okay, so that's going to be a lot of cheese, which is awesome, because nobody hates cheese, right? Um, so that's going to be a pretty tasty meal. Um, but one of my favorite breakfasts, to be honest with you, is egg beaters, turkey sausage, and cheese to hit my macro. A little bit of salsa on there, some hot sauce. Man, I mean, I've been on that all day. Okay. Now, um, and we'll go over time in a second. I don't want to get too far ahead. But that's meal one. Okay. Now, what I'm going to tell you to do is once you go through and do this, so let's pick, let's say we do a shake here, and I'm going to explain the shake in a minute. So let's say we do dinner. Okay, so let's pick a piece for dinner. Chicken. Chicken. Excellent choice. So that's going to be 40 grams of protein and chicken. It's going to be what? Six, eight ounces, somewhere there? Yes, seven, eight ounces. Yes. So you're almost a half a pound. Yep. And fat. Hello. You like how proud yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like an avocado and an apple. Okay, so I, I mean, but it's just like, right? I mean, yeah. So, so here's the rule with shake, all right? And I'm going to cover this real quick. You're allowed to have, if you, if let's say you choose four meals a day, you're allowed to have that many meals of shake. So if you want a two shake, or two whole food meals, cool. If there's no way, and you know where, that you can eat that much of it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> yep, touch up the new fat. Just painful. Yeah. All right. Oh. Anyway. He so may have. We're going to go over this. So, um, shit. Oh, so, oh, so of course. <laughs> with the shake, okay, if let's say you have six meals, you can have three shakes. Four meals, two shakes. Five meals, I would say probably, probably say two shakes. But, Let's say you have a meal where you know that you're not going to hit these, okay? Let's say you try really hard, and what I don't want you to do is overeat to the point where you don't feel good or you're stuffing yourself, right? So if you're full stop, your body, you have to get used to this, okay? So I did a program where we had to eat 2,800 calories a day, and on an off training day, I had to eat 365 grams of protein. I couldn't do that day one. Like, I had to train my body to be able to eat that much food, okay? So don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go through that. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, so let's say meal one, you only make, like, you eat like half of it, right? You get like 25 grams of your protein. Well, if you want to make your shake a little bit bi bigger to compensate for your whole food meals aren't quite so big, totally fine. Right? Totally fine to do that. At the end of the day, what we want are these numbers hit. Okay? How many of people have heard the old adage, oh, don't eat right before bed, it's bad for you? The reason they say that is because what do people normally eat right before bed? Stuff that's bad for you, right? Like, <laughs> nobody has egg beaters or cottage cheese before bed. <laughs> okay, so that's what it's it. As long as at the end of the day you hit your numbers, that's a successful day. Okay? Now, so is it a little bit better if you can spread them out? Absolutely. But is it significant? No. Okay? Now, that being said, you, the second week, we're going to put carbs back in. Okay, and I'm going to email you all this and then now just on Facebook again, but just so you're aware. You're only going to have the one carb meal. So all the carbs that we give you on your macros is to fit into one meal, and the best time to have that is post-workout. You may want to write that down. Okay, after your workout is the best time to consume your carbohydrates. If you can't do it after a workout, no problem. Try to have it two hours before your workout. Okay? You really want your body to have time to digest those carbohydrates before you work out if you can't do it right after. And the reason is when you eat carbohydrates, it releases insulin. Insulin is a storage hormone. And if you eat a bunch of fat right after you work out, your body's in prime storage mode. It's probably not a good time to have a bunch of fat. Right? So if we're going to have the carbs pre-workout, make sure we give our body about two hours so it can fully digest them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you talking about the next meal? Yes, or the next like, meal. What, what? the next meal after you work out? Or yes, it's the post workout meal. Yes, the meal after you work out would be the best time to have your time. So, like, if you work out in the morning, but let's say you had a shake or something before you got here. Yep, that's so fine. Right. So, the next meal would be closer to the lunch. That's the meal you'd have to Yep, yep, whenever it fits and in. It's not like as soon as you're done. No, no, yeah, yeah, you don't, okay. yeah, it's not <laughs> like <laughs> super important that you go home and like, yeah. Especially if you're an early morning workout person. That's another thing too, if you're going to be a really early morning workout person, like roll out of bed and come in here, 
like early. You do not need to eat before you come in. But I will tell you this, drink at least 20 ounces of water. Some of you are going to be like, no, and then you're going to be outside on Monday, and I'm going to be like, told you. <laughs> um, trust me, you need to hydrate before you come in, especially if you're doing this kind of workout that early. Hydrate, 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 okay? Um, again, we released this a little bit ago, but you should be drinking half your body weight ounces of water every single day. I got my gallon. Mike is probably around here somewhere. I'm no. done. It's gone? Right. Mike already did his job here. So, um, obviously, we're a little bit extreme. You do not need to carry around water jugs with you. Um, but just make sure that you're trying to get those amount, that amount of water. Okay? Water will suppress your appetite, promote fat loss, improve organ function, improve blood flow. It's pretty much really good for you. So, drink a lot of it. Okay? Now, with that being said, we'll move into condiments. Alright? So, what can you put in your food? There's a <laughs> list of condiments that you can eat on the food list. If you stick to those, again, you're good. The things you won't see, uh, the things that we most of the time will get a question about is sodium. Okay? If people are like, what about salt? If you're drinking your water, I'm not that concerned about salt. Okay? As long, now, I'm not saying, you know, you said it didn't matter, but I'm saying <laughs> just, it doesn't matter that much as long as you're drinking your water. Sodium's not that big of a deal. Okay? Um, there's a lot of other things that we're way more worried about. Um, so let's just worry about that right now. Now, with condiments, things like <laughs> ranch, barbecue, ketchup, mm -hmm. all that stuff, not on there. Um, <laughs> so, a, a one serving of ketchup is the equivalent of taking a can of Coca-Cola and dumping it on your food. And I've never seen anybody use one serving of ketchup Okay, so, same thing with barbecue sauce. Guys, it's like 32 grams of sugar in like one serving. I ate the first serving, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's just good. Um, so, what about what? Just about, you can do real butter. Real butter is a fat, you're good. It's the real stuff. Don't do it. Right. Say no. You don't need it. it. It's just got a lot of other stuff in it that you don't need. I mean, you can use it, but I wouldn't, it's not on the list, but so I wouldn't. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, so, that's kind of how you meal plan. So, here's the next step that I want you to do. You should not make 42 different meals for your first week. Right? Like, that's a heck of a lot of food to prep and to get ready. What I would recommend you do is make, like, two days of this, maybe three if you're really picky. Okay? People have asked me, well, what do you do when you do it? You don't want to see it because it's the most boring thing. It's every day is the exact same. Why? Because I don't care. Because um, I know that food is a means to an end, right? Um, but I, it's taken me 15 years to do this. Okay, I'm not expecting you to do that. What I am going to tell you is if you have like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday meal plan and a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday meal plan, that typically will save you a lot of time in the grocery store. You can mass cook things. So if you have a really busy, you can just prepare stuff and all you can do is measure it out and go. Okay? Um, it, it makes life really, really easy. The other thing I would recommend that you do is if you do not have a food scale, you will need one. Um, you can get them at Meyer or not Meyer down here, Walmart, um, <laughs> whatever they call them down here, Publix. Um, Walmart has the cheapest ones. That's where I got mine for like 15 bucks. Do you measure out the meat? Are you supposed to measure it out raw or cooked? Because I'm getting cooked. Cooked. Okay, so mine is saying raw. Sorry, yeah, don't. Right. Yeah. Just rice and stuff cooked. Don't eat a cup of dry rice. Uncooked <laughs> 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 rice, because yeah. that would be that would be expensive. Yeah, that that'll ruin you. Yeah. Um, so a vegetarian no. vegetarian. Okay, so you can do fish, eggs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so so do the best you can, but shake will probably be your best friend. Um, yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can, the, the issue with tofu is, again, the protein count is so low for the amount you have to eat that you're eating like a block of tofu, and that's going to get disgusting. Like, I think you're not the first bite, but you probably have like seven. Um, I'm just warning you, like, it, you will have to eat a lot of it. So, um, for you, yeah, yeah, just, um, if you have questions about any of that stuff, just snap a picture of the nutrition label, put it in the group, and we'll answer it. Okay? So that's the other thing, too, guys, um, is, Sandy is in the, uh, she introduced herself last night, one of my clients from Holland. Um, she is really great at recipes, so it, here's the biggest thing. If you're going to get bored really quick, you're going to be like, I don't want to eat the same stuff. Yeah. But if you say, hey, I'm really bored, this is what I'm eating, people will post what they're eating, and you're going to be like, I didn't even think of that. Right? And Sandy, she has some of the most amazing recipes that take way too long to make, 
But if that's you, like she will help you. But here's the thing, if I don't, I told her she cannot post them for at least two weeks. Okay, because I need you to get used to it first, right? Once you get comfortable with what, what you're doing, then if you want to get creative, cool. But if you don't have the basics down, I don't want you to mess it up because you're trying to get creative. Does that make sense? Okay, um, so that, that's my rule with that. Now, cheat meals, everybody's favorite. Okay, um, before I cover that, alcohol and coffee. Let's go. Coffee, totally fine, as long as it's black. <laughs> um, if you have to put something in your coffee like me, I have my coffee has to be candy, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I will put almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk, whatever. I will put that in my coffee with like Truvia. Um, or my favorite thing to do, honestly, is I take a little bit of protein powder and I mix it up in milk and then I pour my hot coffee into it and it tastes like a mocha or a tint or a lot. Like that's my favorite way to get as much flavor out of my coffee as I can. And then I get protein in it too, so it cuts out of my macros like a minute. Here's what coffee does in Calhoun, your water intake. If you're one of those people who shows up at work and sips two cups of coffee for the first four hours there at work and don't drink a single thing of water, that does not count. You have to get your water. Coffee is not a substitute for your water. Co coffee dehydrates you. Yeah. What does almond milk count as? Almond milk is, is free if you use it in your shake. So almond milk, cashew milk, soy milk, any of that stuff is free if you use it in your shake. Okay, because it has like two grams of fat, we don't care. So, um, Speaking of your shit. I drink tea, I don't drink coffee. Yeah, that's totally fine. Absolutely. Just make sure you're careful with the teas that they're not like real high carb, like fruit based teas, like Earl Grey Black, stuff like that is fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with your shakes, so veggies, okay? You have to eat four to six servings of veggies a day. If you're like me and you're not a big fan of veggies, buy a big bag of spinach and blend it in your shake. You won't taste it. Trust me, I've had three people who said that they could, and I fooled them, and I tricked them without them knowing. They didn't know. You cannot taste it. I promise you. Even if you hate spinach, I had three people who hated spinach and none of them tasted it, and I fooled them. So don't think about it. Just do it. Or if you really like your veggies, if it's on the free list, you can eat as much of it as you want. Okay? That's why it's on the free veggie list. So, um, the thing with vegetables is they're really good for two reasons on our program. Is one, protein in high amounts can be acidic, okay? Uh, so the green veggies will actually counteract the pH levels in your body, bringing you back to alkaline, which is what will help you burn fat, okay? So veggies are super important. The other thing is when you're eating high protein diets and you're not eating a lot of fiber because you don't have a lot of carbs in your diet, you can get constipated terribly, and veggies help you too. And I don't want the email. Okay, I've gotten the email three times now. <laughs> I hate getting the I cannot poop email. If you cannot poop, eat your veggies. And if you still cannot poop, go see your physician, go buy better vehicle. Please do not send me the email that says I cannot poop. Okay? It's really weird. I don't want to answer it. So, yeah, whatever you got to do. <laughs> I don't see it. That's on you. You handle that. Um, so, all right. And then we had alcohol. So, alcohol is your cheat meal. You get a cheat meal every week. We do our cheat meals on Saturday night. The reason we do them on Saturday night is because that gives our program a full week on before you have a cheat meal. Okay? You get a cheat meal every single Saturday night. It is designed to be a mental break from the diet. It is designed to give you things to look forward to. Um, if you do six steps forward and one small step back, that's still a pretty good week, right? Um, and also, what we're trying to do is teach you that, okay, if I prepare for an event, like if I know I have a kid's birthday party in six days, I know how to eat up to that kid's birthday party, and I know how to eat up after. Or, hey, I'm going on a cruise for four days. I know how to eat up to my cruise, and I know how to eat when I get back. Right? Whatever, wh the reason our program is six to 12 weeks long is because we want life to happen to you. So that you have to learn how to do this, not just when it's convenient. Right? Like, if, you're, if you plan this perfectly so that it lines up in between two things, it's going to be real hard when that thing comes up for you to get back on track. Right? You need to learn how to maintain this kind of thing so that you can get where you want to get and teach yourself this. Okay? So, life's going to happen, that's why we do it. Now, with food, the reason that booze is bad is not necessarily calorie count, okay? It's because of, it releases cortisol into your system, which inhibits fat burning, okay? Um, 
I had two clients, and if you wouldn't have told me they were married, I would have told you they were identical twins. Is that weird? <laughs> they were like identical body type. I mean, identical. They look like twins. The only difference between them was this dude was not giving up his vodka and times at night after work because he sold cars. It's not less than I understand. But I'll tell you what, the, she, she lost 34 pounds in 12 weeks. He lost nine. And the only difference, literal difference, because she cooked all the food and he ate. So I knew what he was eating. I knew he was hitting his macros because she was going home and she wouldn't let him cheat if he wanted. She would have beaten him. <laughs> and so that was the only difference was that vodka every night, okay? So I've seen firsthand what it does. Um, on top of that, guys, if, if you're one of the people who have to have a glass of wine every night, like, there's places for that. <laughs> um, but we want you to have your cheat meal. Are your cheat meal, go crazy. Like, my cheat, I guarantee you, Saturday night, Michigan State plays Notre Dame, me and that guy will probably be having a growler of beer and some wings or pizza or something, okay? Like, I love, like, put an olive in a tub of vodka and let me pretend it's not vodka, right? Like, I, I will gladly have a cocktail and some food and pizza and wings, whatever you want to have. We can have that. Saturday night, when I wake up, we're back on track, okay? Um, that's how we do things. And the reason we do Saturday night is typically if people are going to go out and be social, it's typically on a weekend night. So that's why we choose Saturday night. Um, and that allows us to prolong our program by an extra day instead of ending it on a Friday, if that makes sense. So uh, that's kind of how cheat meals work. So what questions do we have on food? What about the yes and no? What? What is the yeah, I'm going on? I, okay. So during yep. this couple of three weeks, I have to go to um, the yes, kitchen. Yes, absolutely. So, so typically, if you have to eat out, the, the rule, yep, the, the best rule of thumb, the absolute best thing you can do is look up the menu beforehand and figure out what you probably should and shouldn't have and don't even open the menu when you go. Um, if that's not an option, typically sticking to greens and meat, totally fine. They can load it, because they'll typically cook it in oils and butters and stuff like that, so you're going to have some fat in it. Um, stuff like that is totally fine. Even asking for some extra like olive oil on the side or hot sauce or whatever, totally fine. Um, the biggest thing to watch out for is like the rolls, the appetizers, the desserts, you know, that's the croutons on the staff, you know, that's how they get you with all the extra stuff. So, um, you're going to have lunch meetings and stuff like that, it's not a big deal. Um, I would just say be prepared ahead of time for it a little bit, that's the best case scenario. If not, try to stick to, you know, the more greens the better and some protein out there. Now, are you going to be able to count it exactly? No, but close enough, right? Um, I wouldn't consider that, but, I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about, that's going to happen. So we gotta be able to handle that, right? All right. Other, yes. How do you handle the first week not having any carbs? Okay. Do you recommend not coming in here five times a week? <laughs> no. So, so you're, you're, so the first week, here's what typically will happen. Um, remember, we're counting direct macros. Okay, direct. I'm just wondering how you deal with low carbs. Like oh, so, so technically, here's what we're doing. Because we only count the red carbs, so remember our peanut butter example, how there's proteins, carbs, and fat in peanut butter? Okay. But it only counts as fat. Technically, you're still going to be eating carbs. You're just not counting it. So don't think that you're not actually eating carbs, right? Like you would die. Okay. Um, we want you to eat a balanced diet. But what happens the first week, okay, and this has been really true with almost every challenge I've ever done, is the weekend before a challenge starts, what do most people do? Well, not chicken and broccoli, right? Like, they are <laughs> low. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's, it's everything that they wanted and that they know they're not going to probably have a while, they eat that weekend, right? So, you're going to have, the reason we do a whole week of deep week where we do very low carb is to get your glycogen stores back down to level so that we know how to manipulate you for the rest of five weeks. Does that make sense? <laughs> if any of you are diabetic, hypo, hyperglycemic, let us know that too. Yeah. Make sure you put that yeah. in your paper. So on your, in, in inside of your folder, if you are diabetic, hypoglycemic, or are breastfeeding, we need to know that because your plan will change plenty. Okay? Um, we've worked with people with pumps before. Um, we just need to know, obviously, because we can be doing a little bit of different things just to make sure that we're safe. Okay, now most of the time their blood levels get a lot better. But again, we just want to, if I don't know, I can't help you, and I feel like this is true, right? Because that's stuff that we need to know. So, um, write that down, it's not a big deal. Um, you can do that anyway. Does that answer your question? Yeah, how would you deal with someone if you're on strictly um, no carbs the first week and they're in here working out and they get the shakes? Are you giving them juice? Are you 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We will have, yep, yep. Now, so here's what happens. Like, typically, like, your carbs aren't that low. Like, we're not, like, MMA training here. Um, what's going to happen is, typically, Tuesday night or Wednesday afternoon, you may be a bit of a jerk. Okay, because you're going to be groggy. Your body's going to be trying to switch over into a ketosis state where it burns fat for fuel. Okay, so there may be that period where you are a little foggy, um, a little bit more irritable. You, the cool thing is you can be a complete jerk and blame me. Okay, you got like a 12 hour window. So you're, it's the guy. So you got that, that window. Yeah. Go learn. What? Go learn today. Go learn today. Oh, yeah. Put, put the spinach in the shape. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or there is a supplement called, um, what is it, grass? They have, uh, yeah, they have like the powder, you can buy like powdered vegetables. Yeah, you can buy like a, a supplement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. It tastes worse than the vegetables. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it, yeah, it tastes like dirt. Yeah, it tastes like dirt, so you might have a lot of vegetables. I think it is dirt. <laughs> All right, so um, just real quick, go back on that. So. Your body will go through that. The cool thing is, though, is on Wednesday or Wednesday night, typically, you'll get to a meal and you'll eat it, and then all of a sudden your energy is like, man, why was that so mean? And then you realize that, oh, now my body's figured out how to burn faster fuel again, and now you're going to have unlimited energy. And I'm not telling anyone fat. I'm simply saying that if you had 0% body fat, you'd be dead. So you always will have body fat to burn for fuel. Does that make sense? So that's what we want to reteach your body how to do. Okay, so there may be a little bit of grouch that middle of the first week, and I can't taste the just for that reason. Okay, I don't know if you guys <laughs> um, and then Thursday, I'll turn it back on and it'll be fine, right? But there will be that little period where you are a little groggy, and then it'll end. And then when you get carbs back in, you'll die. Um, so that should cover that. Is there a chance like an app that we can log in our macros and stuff? Um, so, so here's what you can do, and this is what I would recommend, is make your, your sample meal plan, mm -hmm. and wherever you get stuck, take a picture and put it on the Facebook group and let everyone help you. Right. That's what the group is for, right? That's what we're here for, that's what the group's for. Sure but yeah, you don't, the problem is, is if you log your food on like MyFitnessPal or someplace like mm -hmm. that, the issue with that is they count everything, they count exercise, and then they just take my calories away. It's just a very confusing program when you're using our system of count. If you were counting everything, it would be completely different, but we're not. So use the group, and that's totally fine, okay? Or, or your coach. Like, if you're really, really stuck, let Mike or myself know who they carry you to, okay? Any other food questions? Food questions? Mike? Cool. Okay, so there will be more questions on food. I promise it's totally fine, especially as you get into it. Um, remember, it's okay to mess up. It's okay if you don't know everything. As long as you ask and move forward, you figure it out, good, right? You want to learn. So you never did anything perfect the first time you tried it. Unless you're fine. All right. <laughs> so accountability, this is a big thing. So the Facebook group, again, we talked about that. Number one, um, best place to hold yourself accountable is on Facebook. Um, we will do prizes for people who go a minimum of three times a week. Okay. Um, can you? A lot of people go. Can I come more than three times a week? Yeah, you can come as many times as you want. But that first week, I probably recommend three. Um, it's a different style of training. So I can go in, and me and Mike can go. We can go lift weights for hours, and it doesn't matter. I do this for 30 minutes. I'm toast. Okay. Um, I've had very few people who've asked if they can do doubles. If you're working hard enough in one, you don't need to. And if you want to do two, trust me, I will push you till no tomorrow. So if you don't think you're working hard enough, you let us know and we will bury you. All right? Uh, we have no problem doing that for you. But ultimately, you should not need more than our average client in Michigan take four times a week. Okay? Um, are there people who come every day because it's part of their routine? Yeah, 30 minutes. It's not going to kill you. But if you're super sore and you can barely walk, you need to come in the next day and you walk. Like, no. You know, let your body recover a little bit too. Okay, recovery is just as important as working out. So listen to your body. On that note, when you're working out, if you want to bring a water bottle, uh, there will eventually be cubbies up here for you guys to put your stuff when you're working out. You can put your water bottles on top of the cubbies. We have drinking fountains here. Um, feel free as long as they have a screw on top. Okay, and they're not just like open top like like those or hell no on my carpet. Um, but everything else is fine. Now, here's the deal with the carpet and cleaning and everything, okay, is I'm a germ freak. I hate 
dirty, nasty food. Okay? The reason these floors are antimicrobial, okay, they're designed to be gymnastic flooring, so they're very good on your joints. I have to put my face here. I don't want no nastiness on my face. And you don't want no <laughs> on mine. Right? So what I ask you to do is we will clean, we will disinfect, we will shampoo, we will wipe off. We will clean this place all the time. What I ask you to do is two things. Is one, bring shoes to change into. Okay? Um, I don't want whatever's out on the floor on my mat. Okay? If you step in dog crap and then walk in here, I don't want it on my carpet. So bring a change of shoes when you come in. If you wear your outside shoes on and I catch you, I will tell you to remove them. If you don't want to, I'll remove you. I don't care. Um, okay, so on that note, do they really have to be closed in for these kind of shoes? What do you mean? Yes, you, you, you will want to wear tennis shoes, trust me. Because the worst thing, is if you don't wear tennis shoes, and you roll your ankle, that, I promise you that will hurt so much worse. Uh, it hurts the sport, right? Like these shoes are, like, like tennis shoes, even if they're cross tennis basketball shoes, I don't care. Something that has a good sole on it, that allows to support your spine and your feet, right? I mean, all back pain pretty much stems from your feet. Um, if you're in here and we're doing a lateral movement, and you go to change direction, and you flip and come over, yeah, yeah, I don't want that. I don't want you to hurt yourself. That would be my number one. Our, my number one job is the trainer's safety, right? That's my number one job. You, 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 you have to wear that. Now, if you forget your shoes, can you wear a sock? Yes. Can you go, can you, can you go, but I don't want you to have your session. Okay, you have to wear shoes. If you forget your shoes, and you forget them repeatedly, <laughs> I'll fix that. Um, but no, I, the only thing I don't want is bare feet. I, that disgusts me. I don't like feet. And I don't want feet on my feet. Uh, so socks or clean shoes. Okay, I'm weird. Sorry. That's me. Okay, so we will clean the waste. I mean, we will keep this place germ free because the biggest problem is if someone gets sick, everybody gets sick. Uh, I, I'm going to try to prevent that as much as I can. It's really important. So um, one of the things I have to do is just bring with you that are clean to wear, okay? Um, like for me, these shoes will never leave this year, okay? So when I leave, I put my sandals on and I wear socks and sandals and everybody laughs at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so, partners, if you have somebody who you're doing this challenge with, kudos. Keep that person accountable, okay? Um, it's really, really great to have somebody who, even at the end of the day, it's just a matter of texting somebody or messaging them on Facebook, or how was your day or whatever. If you don't have somebody, ask it in the group. If you don't want to do that because you just feel weird about it, totally fine. I would say work out for a few days and you're going to start seeing the same faces every time you're in here. And eventually you might say hi to someone and let you hi back and, and you can talk to them. I mean, the number one thing you can do is really develop some kind of friendship, even if it's with me and mom. Like, that's totally fine. If you want us to be your accountability partner, I had. You know, several of them, like you. Just, they just didn't like anyone else on the way like me. Um, but they would tell me whatever, and it wouldn't tell anyone else. So that's totally fine. If, if you need me to be that person, cool. But if you have someone, that's even better. The important thing is, is that you have somebody to keep you accountable. Um, weekly progress report. So these things you might want to write down. These two emails. Okay? Now this PowerPoint, I believe, is online. Yeah. Okay. So it's online for you. But my email is Aaron. A A R O N A A R O N. Yep, I've never heard that before. Yeah. Uh, at realplatinumfitness.com. R E A L platinumfitness.com. So if you're on my team, which we will release to you this weekend, if you're on my team, you will send your progress reports every Friday by noon, not 12:01, by noon, to me. And then same thing with Mike. Mike's email is Coach Mike Platinum Fitness. At Gmail. So it's a little bit different email. So make sure you understand the difference. Coach Mike. What's the second one? Coach Mike. Platinum Fitness. So no reason. No reason. Yeah. I had to take real because some jerk in Missouri had <laughs> GoDaddy's account. Coach Mike. Platinum Fitness at Gmail. Oh, it's all Coach Mike. I can't say. Coach Mike, five minutes. Yep, yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the reason we ask you to bring your or send your reports in um, by noon is um, 
we obviously have more than one client to deal with, um, and we want to make sure that we take the time to get the answers back to you. We need to look at your week to see how it was, to answer questions you may have, um, and get them back to you in a timely manner. So if you send it in at noon and you don't get a response by one o'clock, understand that there's like 75 people per team. Okay, so we will get you back to response. The reason I ask you to do it by Friday by noon is so that we don't have to spend the time, the very little time that we do get away from here. Um, if we want to spend it with family and friends, um, it's really great for us to have at least a night or a day that we can reset a little bit. So if you can get those in Friday by noon, that would just be awesome for, for Mike and I. Um, if stuff happens, I totally understand. I, I, I forgot the legitimate excuse. There will be times where you go, oh crap, that was supposed to be in three hours ago. No problem. If you have an emergency or something comes up or you can't get it to work, I understand that kind of stuff. I'm just asking you, like, if it's possible to do that, please do it for us. Um, it really means a lot to us to not have to worry about it for a few hours, okay? My goal is to help you as much as I can, but there's also a point where we do need to be able to reset a little bit. Remember why we're working in space nowadays. Okay. We do start at 5 a.m. We're here until whenever we're done. And then we're all back. So we are trying to do our best for you guys. Okay. Um, we only have two slides left. Perfect. So this slide, really cool. What are your goals? So what you're going to do is I want you to think about in a year what you think you could accomplish, right? So if you said by next year, man, it'd be really cool to be a size X, to lose X amount of weight, to run.